All right. Well, happy June, everybody. Yes. Welcome. Welcome to the uh, the new member Q&A via Zoom. I'm Betsy Ko, and in the purple is Stephen Greenwood. Um, Hello. So, and we're, we're just really happy to, to have a great crowd tonight and uh, a big hello to all of you who are watching afterwards, uh, if you're watching the YouTube video. So our two guests tonight are Deborah Martin, who's Zooming in from Australia. I think that, I think that's super cool. And uh, Rolf. Um, Hi. Yeah, Rolf, where are you? Where are you? I'm located uh, up north in New York. Rochester oh. area. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. All right. I have some Madison County ancestry. So. Yeah, I'm I'm actually a downstater. Uh -huh. I'm from New York City. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So oh, interesting. All right. Well, so both um, Deborah and Rolf gave us profiles to look at. So um, I'll start with Deborah's, unless you know there's a reason not to. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen. Steve, I did make you a co-host in case there's anything that... Uh... I'll be looking out for new people joining. Yeah. Okay, so do we see... Um, mm -hmm. I'm good on my end. On... Now, how do you say his name, Deborah Glenn Kiern? I have no idea, really. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. saying Glenn Kern. It's built different ways on different documents. Okay. What kind of, do you have any idea what kind of a name it is? Um, it's, they came from, um, let me think about this, came from um, Stepney, which is like Cockney. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and his father was a wharfinger on the River Thames, Cockney. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I haven't gone any further back than that. Okay. And um, what I'm going to do, just in case everybody would like to um, look at the, uh, the profile on their own screen, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put the, the link in the chat there. So you can either look, look on your Zoom screen or on your, your personal screen there. Uh, and I, I did have... Um, couple of thoughts as I was looking looking along Deborah and then when I reviewed your list of questions a lot of them like corresponded you were wondering about similar things so um right on the money there um one one little style note um mm -hmm. is we we t in wikitree prefers not to use a title in uh -huh. the name um you certainly can use that in the biography um, but, but, um, that's a, that's a style preference. Uh, Unless it's specialized like captain or s some other type of title, but right. Mr. and Mrs. and Miss don't tend to show up in that field. Now I didn't consciously put a title in. So is that, um, um let me look at that. Myself. Yeah. If I'm just going, ah, I see. I'm in edit mode now. Yeah. And I see that you put the pre prefix yes. Mr. Ah, okay. So I don't need to put a prefix in unless it's something like captain or. Right. Yeah. Legal. yeah. yeah. All right. Don't I never even thought about it really until so, it shows up. <laughs> do, you, do you want me to, to take that out or? Do yes. You yeah, absolutely. So I'll do that. I'll have to go back through all of my other profiles and do the same thing because I just. But it's not like it changes easy. the. Uh, it doesn't change the name of the profile. I mean, right. it's just added to that very specific section to let yeah. people know. You know. In case there's any oh, uh, yeah. clarification of gender where mm -hmm. it's unclear, like there might be a, a gender neutral name, mm -hmm. the, the Mr. and Mrs. and Miss can be used to identify gender a little bit better. Mm -hmm. You know, they'll still have a, a color coded um, image. You know, in this case, it doesn't have an image on it. So you see the color coded image. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I, I feel like it could be used in certain instances where gender might be uncertain. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, and um, let's see. I see your, your um, 
your co-managers with somebody. Do, do you know Lee Tingle? Um, we've yeah. um, made brief contact and exchanged phone numbers, but I've never met Lee. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so he, I think it's a he put up the basic profile. Yeah. And then when I um, was researching him, I put in the, the detailed biography. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, this is, uh, this is, wow. All I can say about your, the biography is wow. And um, quite an enjoyable read too. Um, you, you know, you sort of put in some little, um, you know, things to bring it to life. Mm -hmm. um, so um, now I did notice with these, now mm -hmm. I have the, the browser extension, WikiTree browser extension. And one of the really nice uh, features with that is I can just hover my cursor over um, an inline citation number. And in, instead of having to scroll all the way down, I can, oh. I can see what it is. Um, and I see you, you got this from Ancestry and you have some mm -hmm. find my past um, mm -hmm. sources as well. And, but there's no way for somebody to find the same source easily. Yeah. Um, I'm, that, that's something I, I, sorry, that's my phone, I'll just stop it. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Go away. Um, I struggle with citations, like the family search, I can just copy a citation right. from the site. Right. right. But, um, and I know that Ancestry has a link to a citation, but it seems really complicated and messy. Well, so. you know what you need is Sorcerer. Um, do, are you familiar with that? I've heard of it. I haven't used it. Yes. So what you can see on the top, um, top mm -hmm. of my, underneath my tabs, this little yeah. one. Yeah. So that, that's my sorcerer extension and what it will create now, now I'll go to my, my model. This is everybody I've switched over to Ella Louise now. Uh, related to this person. Yes. Yeah. Well, I did oh, this because this is your profiles. <laughs> yeah. So, um, looking here, um, well, I use sorcerer for this only because I was having the family search was strangely not giving me a um, citation. Wait, is this, this might not be the one that I, I want to show you an ancestry one. So let me go to, oh, say her, her brother. Okay, so here um, we've got a 19, 1898 yearbook from Ancestry, and it will give you a link. It so still runs to the paywall, though, right? What was that? It still runs into the paywall, though, because the CGI bin link is, well, is basically the unless you have access to that. Yeah, no, but what it, what what it will show, or I'm going to click on it, mm -hmm. and it will take okay. you to to this. Where's Even the index. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if I'm if I use WikiTree Sourcer, I'd go to the record I want in Ancestry, yeah. yeah, and then click on that extension in my browser, mm -hmm. and then that brings up a citation that I can just copy and paste into right. WikiTree. Exactly. Do I need to do the editing, or do I just copy and paste it as well, is? Let, let me see if I can walk you through an example. Um, but first, let me show you. If I click on this, um, it not it will create citations and it also will search for you. Mm -hmm. so all of these sites. Um, and then down here, the second section will either do an inline citation for you or a source citation where you just put the little asterisk. Um, so let's uh, let's go to Ancestry for a second um, and find a record. Um, What's the difference between inline citation and source citation? Yes, good question. So ooh, if I, let me go back. 
Okay, so this is this profile um, was a fair amount of work, and I'm not done with it yet. But you'll see that that I've got these um, 10, 12, 13 in. These are inline citations. So the fact that um, I cite this fact about Alan and Jesse's divorce, and then the the source number twelve is my my um, source for that for that fact. So versus these ones at the end of the list that just have a little bullet point, yeah, um, which is created by the asterisks. Um, and those those are not woven. I haven't used them to back anything up in the biography. And so therefore I haven't, they're just sort of floating at the bottom. If we go to the edit mode, um, here are my sources. And uh, okay. So these are the ones the, that are just the little bullet point ones because the other ones are incorporated into the text. Right. So, for example, the, what I was just talking about there, what I've what I've highlighted in blue, mm -hmm. is an in. What makes it an inline citation is these little ref tags, ref, yeah. and then ref. Right. Right. Okay, so I've just been using inline citations. I didn't know about the source citations. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think inline citations are nicer because it, it sort of connects all the dots for the person um, versus seeing just a list of sources at, at the bottom. And I tend to think, oh, that's nice, but what does it all mean? <laughs> so um, let me see, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get out of here. <clears throat> By the way, if you know if you're ever in a profile or you go into somebody's profile to, to look at the coding and see how they've done it, but then you want to get out, get out without doing anything, this is very helpful. Return to profile without saving. Um, let me go to Ancestry and see if I can just find, find something. Here's my grandfather. Um, and I want to just his profile. Okay, so I have a number of censuses here. So if I go to if I go to that, not to the actual image. Mm -hmm. And now, if I go to the Sorcerer app. Uh, let me go to, uh, let me build a source citation. And it's, look, it was not even a second. It's saved to my clipboard. Now, if I come back, um, let me see, I'm, I might as well put it on his profile um, and, and go to, um, my family tree, there's my grandfather. So now if I go to edit, and I just paste it in, you can see that it already, I don't even have to put the, the asterisks in, it's done. Um, mm -hmm. the, the triple single apostrophes, that's gonna put it in bold. Anyway, what? Let's preview it, and you can see what it would look like. So it would end up looking like this, and it would give the sharing link. Say the date I um, accessed it, and um, let's see. That's the 1921 census, which I already have. I have so um, I'm not going to keep this, but. Um, does that does that help, Deborah and everybody? That helps hugely. Thank yes. you. Yes, sorcerer is a is a total gift. Mm. Um, okay, now back to John and 
and uh, and Australia. Um, you had asked about um, should you be hyperlinking, mm. um, and yes, yes, I think that that's a great idea to hyperlink. Um, yeah, yeah, I find that even though the profiles will link to them, you know, through its own connections. You can connect to anyone. You can link to someone who's not related. You can link to adopted parents. So if the connections aren't there in the wiki, those hyperlinks, you know, by using the pipe links with the two brackets on either side, will allow other people to get to those profiles easier. We, we want to make it easier and accessible to everyone. So that that's the idea is to link as much stuff as you can. Locations, you know, if there's a space page, I always try to link a space page whenever possible. So more people can find out information on that location or that thing. You know, so there's multiple reasons for doing that. Yeah. Um, Vitz, can you yeah. show me the coding for that? I see you've got a hyperlink in there. Yes. In the second paragraph. Yeah. So I've, I've gone to my, um, my model profile for the evening and, um, of course, these are all hyperlinked, the immediate family. But mm -hmm. the reason I'm bringing up Charles Allen Marsh is that he's the he's the uncle of of Allen, and uh, and it's sort of pivotal to the their their life their family story. And so it would be a little bit fussy to you know oh it's an uncle oh I have to is it a paternal or maternal uncle. So it just makes it easier to hyperlink him. Um, and so let me go into edit. So then it would, if I click on it, it takes me right there. Um, so let me show you this, this bit of coding is really, really helpful. Um, and fairly straightforward, pretty simple yes. for yeah. very common across all of uh, media wiki, any kind of wiki uh -huh. uh, projects utilize this you know, this double bracket link. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put an example. If I, if I wanted to hyperlink myself, um, and it's coming in the chat. I could do it too. Right there. Steve can do an example of himself. So, there it is. Right. So those are our pipes, hyperlinks, or uh, you know, the pipe is referring to the straight line in the middle that separates the actual profile mm -hmm. link from the text that you want to display. So the text you want to display would go on the right and the profile number would go on the left. And that's that's an internal link. You can make external links with single brackets. That, that's just a different situation where if you want to link to somebody, something outside of Wikitree, you would use a, a single bracket link with a space in it instead of a, a not using the pipe. Yeah, there's another example. Yeah, so that that is the hyperlink. That's exactly what I used in this profile. Um, the Wikitree ID, but what gets it displayed is what comes after that little square uh, bit. And by the way, that key, well, I assume it's the same on all keyboards. It's, it's right under my delete key in the upper right-hand corner of my keyboard. And you do have to, um, to shift. It's an uppercase thing. Huh. I could just make a quick comment. Yes. Uh, Betsy, you have that uh, free space page with mm -hmm. hints, yes, and different things that you can uh, use. Right, that I found very helpful. I that has that information on it. Yeah, here. What I'm going to do is um, I'll drop it in the chat. So this is um, uh, just my personal cheat sheet that I uh, I translated into a free space page. Um, and, uh, it was a good exercise because I, I had to make it clear for hopefully clear for, for brains other than mine. And, um, so, um, a lot of Wikitree members have similar things. So you could, you could consider doing your own, but it has, um, some of the wiki code and then models for how to cite things. So, um, if you're, I think Deborah, you said your source citations are hard. So here are a bunch of things where you can just, you know, change the information and make it better. That's great. Thank you. Hey, you're welcome. I'm glad it's helpful, Dee. Um, okay, so back here. So yes, I would I would now you put John himself 
in the list of siblings. Hmm. Yeah. I don't I don't think I don't think I would do that. No. Because there are mm -hmm. some like like you'll see in especially oh well I've done a lot of work in Scottish Scottish profiles. It, families will if they've had a a death, a child die, they'll reuse the name. So so that that would be might be a little confusing to see. Yeah. I yeah, I think I did that because I wanted to show that he was the oldest child. Ah, I, okay. I could do that by just saying a sentence saying John was the eldest child and these are his siblings. Yeah. Yeah. And, yes. Um, so you'll see. On, on the other hand, if, yeah. you'll, if you'll notice, if you scroll through here, John is in the list on the right there, brother of. Right. John is the first one in the list. He's the eldest. And, and uh, they've chosen to... to to include them in the list um, as a feature, actually, to, to to highlight that, and so so I'm not sure that it's always the case that that you shouldn't have a you shouldn't include the person in the list of siblings because it's it's a it's a it's a question of how we structured this, this particular profile, right? Yeah, yeah. Or I I could just change the heading to children mm. of family or family members or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. But that won't always pull up on the side either. I believe that's an extra feature uh, yeah. that is not necessarily default to Wikitree. So that that's, won't always appear. Yeah, that's um, Wikitree browser extension feature. Um, so you, you, if you don't, if you haven't enabled this feature, or if you don't have the Wikitree browser extension, you would be seeing the family members right underneath the born and birth yeah. and death. Um, locations. We just list them. It would not break them down by color code or by order necessarily. Where do I find the Wikitree browser extension? Mm. Okay. Um, Wikitree. Um, oh, okay, cool. There we go. It's um. So it's um, now we have Murray Malone with us who knows a lot about the Wikitree browser extension. Um, Murray, you wanna you wanna talk a little bit about it? You're muted, Murray. Oops. <laughs> Today's a good day to ask that question because because uh, they just released uh, version one point six. Uh, so you can get the latest and greatest version of uh, Wikitree browser extension today. Um, and uh, yeah, you just go to this page. And if you scroll down a little bit and get rid of the table of contents so it doesn't slow us down. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Good. Now you just go past uh, installation there. Now, see, you'll see that there's a the stable version and the mm -hmm. preview version. Now, the stable version, as I understand it, um, uh, it's it's being held up to get into the Chrome store. Uh, it just got to go through some approval process, so it might get there on Monday or something like that. Uh, the Firefox one is there, but if you're in a hurry and you want to get the Chrome uh, preview version, actually today, maybe today only, uh, the preview version is identical to the stable version. Uh, if you go to the, the preview version link, you can get the Firefox version also. Uh, and then for Safari, you'd have to contact Jamie to uh, to be a tester. And, uh, and she would make that available to you. And it's also available in version 1.6. Cool, so, I have just added it to Chrome. Awesome, yes. And it's the, you know, this little, look, it's the Wikitree logo. And it's, there's so much you can do with this. I mean, uh, they've actually, uh, the Wikitree team has devoted multiple live stream presentations to showing off all the, all the bells and whistles. Um, they're the Wikitree Tours. Um, uh, that's the title of the series that goes through the yeah. research session. Yeah. Did you want me to say, did you want yeah, me to say it, something else? Or? Uh, well, so, 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 so the features that I love about this thing, this tool is number one is the hypertext capabilities, uh, the previews. And so, um, Betsy has already shown you that you can preview the footnotes, the references. Right. But you, but you can also, um, if, if you go, uh, yeah, but you can also preview uh, space pages and category pages and 
and stuff like that. And now, just brand new, uh-huh. uh, you can you can you can preview to the uh, place in the file. So if you want to name the link right to the actual section that you want to go to, ah. the, 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 the preview will take you to that section. So mm-hmm. that's pretty nice. Yeah, yeah. Nice. And, and then the second thing is the readability options. And if you, if you set up the readability options, you can choose sort of what's going to be on your page. Mm-hmm. If you want to hide some things and rearrange things like that, that list of uh, relatives on the, on the right there, that's a feature that you can, you can mm-hmm. set that up. So there's all kinds of features that you can change. Yeah. Yeah. You just have, you just have to play around with it and, um, and see what you like. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thank you, Barry. Um, all right. Yes. So uh, Sorcerer and Browser Extension are two, two must-haves. Um, let's see. So we talked about Sorcerer hyperlinking, um, the siblings, the mister. Um, one little thing I noticed when you were talking about um, his working life, mm-hmm. um, you used the first person tense. Mm. Yes. And... Um, I, we, we shy away from that in a bio, but it would be perfectly acceptable to do that in research notes. Right. Right. And I, I think, did you ask me about research notes? I think I did. I think that was about, one of the questions. Yeah, I think that was one of your questions. So here's, so research notes go between the biography and above the sources. Mm-hmm. Right. And one thing that let's see um if you wanted to if you were making a conjecture or you wanted to really um if you felt like you should take ownership of what you were saying in the research notes Mm -hmm. you can do the four tildes i'm gonna put that in the in the chat tilde is in the upper left hand corner and what that's going to create is um, it'll say your name and a timestamp. So mm-hmm. it's kind of like your signature. You just la di da di da, and then the four tildes in edit mode, and then it will create the signature for you. Mm-hmm. I do that a lot. I, I in this particular research note, I it seemed pretty cut and dry to me, so I I didn't in that case, but. Um, okay. Um, and then the, you asked about the transcription, uh, you're like, for instance, yes, here's the second marriage Mm -hmm. and you have a transcription of the, um, of what's on the marriage record. Mm -hmm. Would that be better as, um, as a, image you like, could, yeah I, I know how to present this a little bit better uh you yeah. can use the block quote uh html so you'd have block quote in, in the two carrots then you'd have the text and then you'd end it you know make sure you you end uh, that block quote uh to that way it would offset it a little bit it would indent it a little bit to the right and it would make it stand out as its own paragraph so it wouldn't be confused with uh whatever is typed on the profile so i'm, I'm wondering if that's maybe something we can do as an example right now just like yeah. you know, yeah. in that right. html yep um yeah would it be okay if if yep. steve absolutely okay I believe that's the right one. <laughs> now I have to find so out. <laughs> the profile you want is Rainer two seven two two. Oh, I can do it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, go for it. I'd like to learn this too. Yeah, but I'd like to see what the coding is that makes that happen. Right, okay. right. Let me go ahead and share my screen then. Thank okay. you, Steve. Uh, so, uh, if you want to get out of your screen share, I'll switch over and share mm-hmm. mine. Sure. Great. Okay. And I have permissions. Outstanding. Uh, I am on the profile for John Blunkhorn Rayner. Can everyone see that? Yes. Yeah. Can we close the chat here? Okay. So let's go make sure this is the correct profile. Oh, uh, I'm gonna have so much fun with this. <laughs> Where is it? Okay, it's down here in second marriage. Yeah. Yeah. So, 
Uh, I would usually I have the ability to edit sections, but I think that maybe that's only available on space pages. So they haven't quite got that on profiles yet. But let's go ahead and open it up. You can edit whatever you like, Stephen. You have my permission. Well, within reason, of course. I uh, <laughs> try not to vandalize it uh, too much. So I, I love this profile. This, this is a very nice profile and line citations, uh, a lot of details. I love this. Um, I'm, we might want to reword that too. I'll come back to working life uh, here in a second then. Okay, so here is second marriage. Uh, mm -hmm. This is text. Okay, so this, yeah. what we probably want to do is I'm going to use block quote. So you can see what I typed in here. I started that, put in yeah. block quote as one word, uh, ended it with that. Now I have to actually finish the HTML on the other end. Huh. That this will just take this paragraph and let's see what it does. Let's go into preview mode, let's go back down. And look at that, voila, uh -huh. it's the entire thing for you. Yes. Now we could probably clarify as well that this is like text from the document. So mm -hmm. what would you, what would we want to put in front of this? Like that's not going to be quoted. Um, what is this actual document here? The marriage certificate or the entry in the register. Um, okay. So, so it's, it's this link right here or, or it's this source. Yeah. Okay, let's just click on that. It takes me right down to where I need to. Uh, hmm. I'm going to copy this. Because we, we already have it cited. Now I'm mm. just going to go back to here. I love having a scroll wheel. Okay, so we'll just add an extra little clarification here. Uh, the following is text from would we say the marriage certificate then um it was it was actually the um register um okay so like, the marriage register it, yeah of yeah. john rader and kezia esther bellingham yeah okay so then this might look a little bit cooler now let me bring that up there and you have, you have a typo. Uh, yeah, I, I see what I did. <laughs> oh, that is being scrutinized. Let's go ahead. And... There's nothing worse than typing in front of a live audience. Uh, yeah, yeah. So it's still part of the text. Then it yeah. still adds a little bit of a gap here. And then it indents that. Uh, even furthermore, I could take it one step further to make it stand out. I can add two little tick marks here. And that will make it italicized. And let's see how that looks. Mm. Ah. Oh, look at that. Now we can know for certain that it's text. I love that. Yeah. So does does that look nicer? Or it looks beautiful. So was yeah. that um two single quotes or a double quote? Uh yeah, but you don't want to use the actual um like quotation mark because mm. uh, it uses the single ticks in sequence in wiki code to indicate italicism or bolding. So if you do three, obviously it's bold, two italicized, uh, wow. and one doesn't do anything, but the one will show up as, as just like a, a quote mark. Yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah, I mean, that that's one little thing I can update on there for you. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's go back to that working life section. So I know you said you haven't been able to find any records of John's working mm -hmm. life as a sailor. There is a we can reword this as currently no records of John's working life as a sailor have been found. Yep. Yep. So maybe that's the text we want to use. Yeah. So in a non a non POV uh, setting, you know, uh, having edited enough Wikipedia and other wikis, I, I have a tendency to, to know how to <laughs> you know, reword yeah. things here. So. Uh, Currently, Caspian, stop scratching my stuff. My cat is being very needy right now. I know I could just copy and paste it again, but. <laughs> oh. 
And to think I was on a computer for eight hours before I came here. Oh. Right. So yeah, you currently no records of John's working life as a sailor have been found. There's a John Rayner listed as ordinary seaman on the Java. Ooh, let's add some metallicism because Java is the name of a ship. Mm -hmm. Let's see, make that clean. I, I literally could like work on these all day. Like I'm kind of nitpicky when it comes to my own profiles. Uh, but 13, 1833 is after he married Jane Stewart and settled in Australia. Okay, so maybe there is a way that could be reworded too. Um, maybe I should put all of that in research notes, thinking about it. I, I mean, in terms of working in life, I think it's important to still note here. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, we just word it in a way that it reads more like a biography. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's fine when we say it like this, you know, because we're, we're all doing research on this, and this is a presentation of research. Mm -hmm. um, you know, also uh, in, in verifying like the number of children. So mm -hmm. even though they're like a reference individually, like there could be another reference potentially for, you know, however many children they had total, like if it shows up in the census or something, or mm -hmm. if it's, you know, there could be another thing for that yeah. alone. Because it's possible that maybe they had eight children. Maybe we don't know about another child. And, uh, you know, that would give us some kind of limit to that. Uh, and I guess just as a, this is again, another nitpicky thing. I tend to like not put a space in between the ref tag and the actual title of the thing, uh, right. it probably doesn't make any difference, but effectively it's just going to, it's going to assign that straight to that ref name. Uh, I also, if there's repeating ones, you can use ref space name and then title like what that reference is. And every time it sees that, it'll just add like another version of it down below. Now, I think maybe you have individual ones that are all different. So that might not apply here. Yeah, yeah uh, but in other, in other profiles, I've certainly, um, I haven't used that facility. I've just quoted them twice. So, um, uh, being a lazy, really. Right. I'm not seeing any repeats in here right now. But if there were, if there was repeats, then we would basically have like you know 16-1, 16 16-2, 16 and so we'd group them yeah. together. I provide examples of that in my cheat sheet. Mm -hmm. okay. So you can check that. Uh, I'm not going to manipulate any of this since you did such a really nice job citing all of these as it was. Uh, but yeah, I think with those changes, I'm going to say that I did some uh, what bio build. I have a tendency to word things a certain way. Uh, we'll we'll say formatting. We'll say we did formatting, and then I'll go ahead and just commit the changes. And there is the new updated John Blinker and Rayner profile there. So you can and see that. And you can order. see that. Steve has the tradi traditional, I guess you'd call it, um, way where you list the family underneath the birth, oh. or between the birth and death. Infant. Yeah, this still shows up like this for me, but I have an extension where, or maybe it's integrated now into Wikitree where you can just highlight over these and it shows you the profiles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I, I still, I, I kind of like seeing how they're related in order and like genders and things like that too. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, I've only had it like that for a few weeks. I'm I'm sort of used to it. I'm just mm -hmm. playing around with it. Oh, I just realized that that's kind of pushing into that. So maybe I need to add an extra space here real quick. <laughs> that's right. going to that's going to bug me. Uh, uh, let's go ahead and just fix that real quick. I don't know why it was pushing it down. Probably because it was using the HTML code to override it. Oh yeah. yeah. So I'm see. going to have to go back through all my profiles and apply all of this stuff I've just learned. So, oh. just say minor edit, minor corrections. Let's see if that helps. Okay. Sorry, it's a little laggy. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> if I don't do it, it bunches it right up. If I do it one space, then it has this horrible horrendous large space. So you can fiddle with it as you please afterwards. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to make a bunch of unnecessary edits. Uh, but yeah, cool. I really like this profile a lot. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Bravo. Uh, so I'll, I'll back out. Yeah. Well, I'm thinking at this point, maybe we should uh, switch over to Rolf's. Um, yeah. and as I recall, Rolf's, we're going to look at Rolf's father's category, which has Profile, I'm sorry, Rolf's father's profile, which uses categories 
And that was another area where you had questions, Deborah. So right. And, and that and, and the fact that um, my grandmother had a relationship with a man that fathered my child, my, that fathered my father. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, there was no relationship. There was no marriage. There is nothing. A nocturnal uh, event. Right. But, but he is the biological father and, and mm -hmm. she married two other times. So there's like three men on her profile that I don't know if you look at it, you get the impression that the one is actually a husband. Mm. If that makes sense. Um, oh, wait a minute. Oh, by the way, my, my profiles, my biographies and my information is nowhere near as sophisticated as what we just looked at. And that is okay. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes there isn't information. I don't yeah. have, I don't even know who my, my maternal grandfather is and he's in Germany well, somewhere. So I have nothing. <laughs> see, see, my problem is, is uh, I, I tend not to write in paragraphs. I write, mm -hmm. write in sentences. He was mm -hmm. a carpenter. Mm -hmm. He was, you know. Oh, that, the facts. Yes. Yeah, the facts. Exactly. Okay. So, so I've got to get a little bit better than that. I mean, yeah, everybody does it differently. Some write in prose and some write in, you know, bullet point. It just depends on what you mm -hmm. want to get out of it. Again, for those who want to look on on a screen at home, yep. there's the link to uh, the profile that's on on screen right now. Stuttgart. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, an interesting point. Uh, my parents and I came to this country back in '55. Before they came, they made a decision whether to go to Australia or come to the United States. Mm -hmm. yeah, there's a lot of Germans that immigrate to Australia. Well, mm -hmm. yeah, the, 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 my understanding, and I don't have any documented proof, but my understanding was that uh, the Australian government offered immigrants a plot of land if they were tradesmen. My father was a carpenter. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but they decided against it. So what was the benefit of coming to America? Uh, he time, had a I mean. sister, a half sister. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the family connection that usually helps too. You get them grounded. Yeah. 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 So, Would have been interesting if I had lived in Australia instead of New York. So <laughs> did they immigrate to New York then? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fifty-five. We came. Okay, there it is. It's right in front of me. <laughs> so, well, do you want to? You had some specific questions about. Um, sources that are um, documents in your possession or your, your that have right. been, yeah. I think I think I heard. I'm not sure if it was you, Betsy, that said uh, we don't tend to add photographs of documents to the profiles. Is that correct? You can. You can. Um, okay. You I've should. done it. Like for, is this a document that you personally own that's not available? Yes. So okay. for my father, I've got a, a couple of documents yeah. that I own that um, I wasn't sure if I should put them on his profile. Yeah. Or if I should they're just not reference. Yeah. No, no. They're... Right. So I think that would be okay. Like. For example, I ordered an ancestor's Civil War pension file a couple of years mm -hmm. ago. And within that, there was a copy of his marriage certificate, um, which to my knowledge is not, I'd never seen it before. It's not, I had researched him extensively. And so, um, but it's it's cool looking. So I that's something that I would eventually like to put up on his profile. Right. Um, now, if it's something like um, an image or maybe a newspaper clipping of an obituary, say you got it from newspapers.com, then right. in that case, if you clipped it, you just need to source it with a link. Okay. That, that the, the issue is that the newspapers are still copyrighted up to copyrighted. 1928, I believe. Right. 
Yeah. And there is a complicated situation with newspapers based on like who is the editor, like who has access to it. You know, we generally I'll go I'll go from newspapers that are older than like 1923 just for to make sure. Yeah. Well, I have things like marriage certificates, um, birth certificates, things like that that I have that the German government isn't releasing at this point because of uh, mm -hmm. the amount of time. Yeah. I forget what the, uh, yeah, it's gonna be a hundred years Germany's before they- laws. They might be stricter I mean, than America's laws. Of, yeah, yeah. But if it's, I, I keep coming back to that sort of thing. If it's, if it's your, related yeah. to your father, it's, I mean, it's yeah. your property. Yeah, no, exactly. I'm just saying that I, I'm not able to go out to family search or ancestry and find the exact document, mm -hmm. but I have the document and it, it is mine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now that doesn't mean that this stuff isn't already floating around the internet freely. I mean, it's just who's going to enforce it, right? Yeah, I, I, I haven't found anything like that. I mean, I had to contact uh, the church out there. They sent me the document, you know, stuff mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah. Um, now, again, is your ancestry largely Baden-Württemberg or does it start to spread into other German states? <laughs> no, Baden-Württemberg is, uh, is where the, most of my family, uh, you know, uh, the, the Maxa line of the family is not a biological. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, he adopted my father when he was uh, two Deeper. years old. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, so he took on that name. Uh, he was given that name, uh, but he's not biological. Right, so we would want to follow the Ziegler line because that's the yeah. biological line. So, I mean, from a from a Baden-Württemberg standpoint, that family line uh, originally came from the Czech Republic. Ah, uh, yeah. So, about Bohemia. Yeah, I I have a difficult time finding any information, any further back information on that family. I mean, okay. I have, you know. Well, again, you know, grand, I remember great grandfather. Uh, and, we can ask members in Germany Project to look at some of that for you as well. Mm, yeah, I'm I'm part of that project, but R right, right. We can talk to yeah. Lower Helena or anybody else that yeah. might be. There. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, one one thing that you did that was really good was uh, your see also section, um, and that's <laughs> really where find a grave and things like that um, should go. And what Murray's done in the uh, in the chat here, it looks like he ran Sorcerer on it, Sorcerer on it. And so this is the uh, the proper way that the find a grave citation should look. Um, I got that from you from a previous uh, Zoom meeting. Oh, th this, oh, okay. And see also. Yeah, oh, okay, yes, I do remember talking right. about that. I did learn something. <laughs> And I no. got it from David Randall and his profile completion checklist. Now, now that's the one that's automatically at the bottom of the find a grave. So that those those tend to be the ones I end up using. But again, I will only sort it. I will only cite it relating to the burial. I won't cite it for the death or anything other information. Right. You right. know, because the location we can probably say is fairly accurate unless it's a cenotaph. The information on the stones may be accurate, but it could have been submitted by a third party that was reporting the death. So they might put on the stone was reported. That might not be accurate. Um, right. So, so yeah, for those reasons, like I'll still put it in as a source, but I'll only cite what it applies to, you know, the location of the burial. Uh, anything else that's in the death record, that's going to actually like talk about death dates, maybe even birth dates are in the death records as well. Um, but yeah, that that formatting that's in the page is what's usually on to find a grave itself. The other one that was produced by Sorcerer just, you know, adds that extra information, uh, links it a little bit differently. I have a tendency to do it myself. I just have the tendency to, like, do a handheld bold and not even worry about the Sorcerer because I'm weird. <laughs> this is this is really um, very, very uh, detailed. I mean, the plot, yeah. the lot, the 
section. Yeah. If that information is available on that find a grave profile, because not all the find a graves have, you know, right. plot information. Right. right. I always try to put that into the text if possible. So um, you can see um, with regard to categories, categories are, are really great ways to tag our profiles um, with regard to um, places that the person lived, born, married, died, lived in this place, um, where they were buried, uh, what their occupation was. So you can see where we're talking about, you know, the, the, bear, the uh, find a grave that um, Eric is, is categorized within the, the cemetery's category. If we go there, then we see all these other wiki tree profiles from the same cemetery. Oh, and then my favorite part goes to the top. Yep, I know it's what you're doing. Yep, I do. Wait, let me get the chat out of, out of the way. So my connections, let's see if I'm related to anyone in Maple Grove Cemetery. Oh. Okay. You have seven cousins? So, yeah. Interesting. Impressive, because there's probably the American bottleneck being attached to the cemetery. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The American bottleneck is what I like to refer to is when everyone came over on the boats at the same time in the 1600s, 1700s and uh, intermarried into each other. And so a lot of the people in the Northeast connect to a lot of people in the rest of the country. So, so these, these seven people up here would be, yeah, direct, direct bloodline. Whereas the other, other people down here, connections, there would be some marriage in between. The 15 for marriage is pretty close though. So. Yeah, it is. It is. So that's a, that's a fun little thing you can play, play around yeah. with. Um, and in terms of where to find, uh oh, I've lost, I've lost there. No, I'm, I'm, I'm back. Okay. Um, <laughs> where you can find categories um, is to go under find categories. And uh, this is the first page you come to is, is very, very broad. Um, but for instance, see here, you could go to cemeteries mm -hmm. or occupations. Um, and it's, it's highly specific. Um, like um, I have a lot of doctors in the family. I mean, you can drill down all the way down to, you know, so-and-so was an obstetrician, <laughs> not just a doctor. So it's, it's, it's neat that way in cemeteries, it's, you know, by continent and then country and then, well, in the United States, state, county or, or town. So, um, yeah, and the way to categorize, uh, let me let me do it on my my grandfather's profile. If I go into edit mode, and huh, trying to think of you already have a draft, so that might be affecting uh, your ability. I should to have edit. a draft. I do I? Yeah, I so you have an active draft, so you may have to just delete the draft. Oh yeah. Because I wanted to, yeah, I didn't want to resave the census. Mm -hmm. So here I am, I'm in edit mode. And so it's yeah. this, this is what you want for categories. So um, I've only categorized him in physicians. Uh, let me, let me categorize him for Niagara Falls, um, Ontario because that's where he was born. Um, I could also categorize him to Bronxville, New York, where he spent his adult life. And then, so you don't, you don't, you can, the system will just uh, A lot better now for auto-completing them because we used to have to do it when we didn't have the drop down. We had to search for him by hand. Yeah, yeah, this is, so People there's- are spoiled now. <laughs> <laughs> Can I give you a new tip? Yes, please, Mary. So see the see the categories button uh, below the toolbar. Um. Yes. Uh huh. Now see, it's got a look. Add location category. Add cemetery category. Add any category. So that's and for something that's not 
already in the system. Well, no, no, no. It's 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 all it's already in the system. But let's just say let's just say that you wanted to add a cemetery category. Go ahead and click on that. Okay. See that new box? Yeah. Now go ahead and start typing in something Niagara Falls or or Paris, France, or whatever you want, and it's going to list. Okay. All right. So, and I could do. There we go. That's there you go. It. And it would just show up the same way. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you, you don't have auto categories uh, enabled. And that's uh, another uh, thing that, that's terribly new. Okay, that's on the browser extension? Yeah. Yeah. And it'll go through, it'll go through and look for locations and look for cemeteries. And if it can find in census records, it'll find occupations and see if it can find categories for them. Mm -hmm. What what is that called? The auto, auto categories? Yeah, auto categories. Okay. All right. Excellent. So searches the text of the biography to determine yeah. which categories it should be going into. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. And then how and do does I... it create those categories? Say that again. You have to sign up on. Will it create those categories based on what's in your biography? No, no. It'll 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 look for, for example, it'll it'll look for Fairview Cemetery in Niagara Falls. It'll it'll recognize that pattern and it'll say, oh, I've got a category that fits that. I'm going to add that category. But if it sees, see. if it sees Fairview Cemetery in you know Bracebridge, Ontario, and <laughs> it doesn't already have a category for that cemetery, it's not going to create one. Okay. Hmm. Right, you still have to create the category by hand, though. Yes. Right. Yeah, you could still do that, of course. And in fact, once you had, then uh -huh. it would start to show up in suggestions, right? Because because once it's in the category list, then it's part of the suggestion list. It might take a day for it to rotate through the system. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Oh. You know. Um. How do I get out of this box, Marie? Uh. So you you either close. select that because you want to enter it, or you or you press close. Um. And where? Oh, at, at the, the bottom. bottom. Okay. No, no, don't don't scroll. Just oh, you, you can't move your the mouse. Button, this is closed. Oh, it's underneath. Please. I'm sorry. Yes, it was yeah. hidden by the um, uh, by the photos of all of you. Okay, close. Um, because I had I had already done it the other way. So then yeah. this, is, I've done categorization. Full save, and now if I go to that category, oh, oh, go to the category of that cemetery and my connections, there's my grandfather. Oh. Oh, two oh, people and, the same well, name. Yeah, father and son. That's my, my grandfather and my great-grandfather. Yeah. Wait, you have, uh, oh, but there's my surname in there as well. Interesting. Greenwood, yeah. You know, it's maddening. We cannot figure out where that name comes from, Greenwood, what the significance is. It's not a family name. So it's uh, a middle name. It's a middle name, but you know, usually mm. with middle names, there's some kind of link. Right, like the mother before that would have had yeah. another surname, right. something like that. Right. Um, right. Green, Greenwood is a place name in Ontario. Well, Greenwood is a very common name <laughs> across a lot of the planet. <laughs> oh, okay. I mean, but I, the funny thing is, my name is actually adopted. At some point, I'm no longer Greenwood after the second great grandfather. It's an adoption. Um, but I know where those people came from that adopted. They're from Dent in Yorkshire. So that's like where those Greenwoods came from a long time ago. Yeah. I have some ancestors who were given the names of a family friend. Um, and I only picked that up because the family friend was also an executor in the will. So that can be. Um, yeah. But I mean, they were in Ontario, and she was the youngest child of the family and the only one to be born in Ontario. So it could have a connection, Murray, to Greenwood, Ontario. Look into that. Right. If you're looking at that connection. Yeah. Uh, very, anyway, it is very we're, common otherwise. We're, we're going down a rabbit hole. <laughs> back, to, back to Rolf. <laughs> Isn't that what we do best? I know. We are very good at that. Um, okay. So, 
um, things that are in um, in uh, in your in your possession, and I think this is in my cheat sheet. I, you can just say um, that it is a personal document, right? Well, yeah, within within your possession. Um, yeah, I read that, but I guess where I was confused was, you know, do I overload the profile with all these images? No, no, no. Or... Don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. Okay. If you have if you have if you have records, and they are part of your private collection, that's what I say. I write down uh, part of, part of my private collection. So these, mm -hmm. you know, I refer to records in my private collection. If you want to make photographs of those records that are in your private collection. There's no copyright on them; they're yours. Right. So you so you can you can photograph them, and you can put them on on the thing. Now, you know, you probably don't want to put thousands of records up there, right? I mean, you don't want to overload the computer and and overload the system but but you know you're probably talking about a dozen or a couple of dozen records so what's the harm in that okay yeah all right so Pardon. here's my, my dad um where um you know i i knew him for um 48 years so um you know that's i i can be a source because i was there um but mm -hmm. i have his death certificate i did put you know the number but just in my possession. Um, this was one of my early profiles. So I don't know what I was doing here. I'll have to check this out. Um, I have his naturalization certificate and I have his, his college, well, his, his uh, high school and college diplomas. So that, that's how I handle that. Um, I think okay. the same. Okay. So it sounds like I have some work to do. Well, yeah. we're all we're all in the same boat. We have so many yeah. different projects we have to do. <laughs> I was going to add that if you wanted a separate space for some of the images, if you felt like they weren't appropriate to put into the profiles themselves, you could make a space page, especially again yeah. if you wanted to talk about a location or maybe a very particular part of the family. Like you could have a page on a family heirloom. You could talk about it and have images associated with that. You know, and that mm -hmm. might be something that one of your cousins might be interested in checking out as well. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm looking at, Rolf, I'm looking at this National Archives, U.S. reports of deaths of American citizens abroad. This would be something where if you could track this, I mean, is this something that you visited the National Archives and you saw or? No, I have the document. My father and mother were on vacation uh -huh. and my father died out there. And the body wouldn't be allowed to send back to the United States until they had a burial site. So mm -hmm. I got a document from that represented that information. Mm -hmm. And that was posted on the National Archive. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and so this would be a really good one to say, you know, in possession of, and then you're... Okay. Your ID, yeah, and and maybe explain the circumstances, um, you know, of that he and, had and put a copy of it on on the profile. Uh, you could look at it and look at it this way. I mean, we're not going to be here forever, right? So, any information that you feel is relevant to help others continue the research after we pass away. Uh, mm -hmm. That is information that you can provide on those profiles. If you look at it that right. way, you know, kind of a completist view, but. That could, again, further research for future people still wanting to learn about your family and maybe they want to learn about you, you know, because then you'll become a historical figure that'll have his own profile and, you know, it'll be accessible to other people at that point. Right. So, right. Right. We're all part of the history that just continues. We're, we're just the next chain in that history. Yeah. So did, did we did we answer your questions, Rolf? Yeah. I think so. Uh, I mean, the only thing that I'm still a little in quandary about is what do I do with this guy that was my actual father's father? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Your actual His name was Ziegler. Yeah. Can we can we go and look at him? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Okay, there he is. So 
do we have parents for this? We I do. do. Okay. Uh, interestingly yeah. enough, for whatever reason, my so father had to have his birth certificate with his parents on it. Okay, so that's a baptism record. Um, that's that's something that we would give. Yeah, there's a family search record for it. So mm -hmm. that's proving his birth to that father, Krelsheim and Wurttemberg, uh, Willenstein. Uh, so I'm trying to figure out, like, what, what do you feel like is missing from this profile? Well, I, where where I'm, I guess, con not concerned, but confused is uh, if you look at my grandmother's profile, he's listed there. And I'm not sure that <laughs> unless you read the narrative that, that people think that she married him. So wait a minute, I'm going to go back to your father and now right. go to yeah. his mother. Yes. Right. Frida. So so she she married this gentleman by the name of Hitner. Mm -hmm. Hitner. And uh he died right shortly after the wedding in the First World War. Mm -hmm. And then and and the story is she either had a relationship or she was taken advantage of. And that was with this Siegler guy. Mm -hmm. And she got pregnant. And that was my father. And then shortly after my father was born, she married Maxa. Mm -hmm. And he became the stepfather. Yeah, so it does seem fill out in the biography here. Yes, uh, in I, the biography, I, mm -hmm. I, I try to, I try to, you know, identify the people. Mm -hmm. I'm just not sure if you look at it from the top view, whether that message comes across. I like the bold things that are unique and weird. The bold. So I like to use the bolding for this is oh, a thing yeah. where a non-paternal event happened. Mm -hmm. See also here, you know, like flashes and marquee and, and flashing lights. Um, I could show an example of things like that too. Yeah, yeah. Do you want to? Uh, sure. Yeah, let me go back to screen here. I, I want to make sure I have something that's ready to go before I do. So I may have to do a little bit of searching here. So if you want to continue talking about that, I'll do a search. Oh, okay. Right now. Um, let's go back to Frida. Um, yeah. I mean, I I think it's clear in the biography. I, I, you know, I, I understand. Okay. Um, and yeah, I mean, anyone who spends enough time sort of looking around, looking around at the family relationships are going to realize that now did she have, okay. So she, this is the half sister that your father came to the United States to be near. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. And she was, she was a Maxa. Uh huh. Right. Right. Yeah. So if you, I mean, if you go to her profile, you see. Oh. Yeah. There's. But father. There's not was she the daughter of, of your yes. mother? Okay. Of my grandmother. Yeah. All right. I was I was able to find something I worked on recently. Um, okay. You you'll recognize this profile. All right. <laughs> So let's. So for those not in the know, uh, Betsy and I actually had a nice little uh, Zoom meeting with a notable person that we're going to be sharing a video of pretty soon, and this is one of their ancestors. Can everybody see this? Mm -hmm. yep. uh, Elias Davison Horton. Uh, he's an interesting person. It connects to our uh, notable, and I found him as an interesting person because he has a connection to the Civil War. And so if you look in this, you know, biography, first off, I wanted to just rebold his name. That's just the thing that we do, or I do at least. And then at the bottom, you can go straight to it and see, oh, look, he was wounded in the Battle of Burnt Church in the Civil War, whatever that is. And I still don't know what that battle is or where the Burnt Church is, but I yeah. wanted to highlight it and I added it in bold so it stands out, you know, and so that... That's like a, a thing that kind of points out this notable feature of this profile. I don't know. I'm just using this as an example. Uh, you don't have to follow my lead on it. But, uh, you know, same thing for some of the sources, too. You know, if you bold a little bit in the front, it does stick out a little bit better. Um, 
Does does that clarify what I was talking about? Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, Rolf, did you also see that Gerard put in the chat? Um, yes, uh, that, that, uh, he has a, a lead to a company that uh, does check genealogy pathfinders. So. Which known as Czechoslovakia or Czech Republic now, back in the day, it would have been known as Bohemia. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Or Frisia, you know, a variety of kingdoms in that area of the world. Okay. Let me ask a, a silly question. Is there a way to capture what's in the chat? Yes, um, that's not a silly question at all. Um, if you hit the three dots that are the, at the very bottom of the, the uh, chat, area you'll get a pull down menu and save chat is right at the top of that list okay yeah oh thank you d i have a i don't know if that's the one burt church first nation let's see if this is it uh new brunswick canada oh would that have been in the american civil war don't I don't think this is the one. That's New Brunswick, Canada. See, the Battle of Burnt Church that I know about is is the French and Indian War. Yeah, no, they they that's, said this one. Seventeen hundreds. No, they they said there was a Burnt Church battle in the Civil War, American Civil War. That'd be cool if somebody could help figure that part out. Is that that one was still kind of uh, leaving me a little lost. Yeah, I don't think I don't think it's the right one, D. But thanks for looking into that. So again, rabbit holes aren't they great? <laughs> we learn examples from them. So, um, do we have any burning questions? I see what you did there. Nice segue. <laughs> you left the door open for me. <laughs> There's no door. They already burnt the church. <laughs> I think you've covered all of my questions and okay. thank you very much that was so useful oh good good and um you know you can find find me on the um let me let me quickly grab the link for you um, um it does go to show that a little formatting can go a long way too yes yes make them pretty make them look presentable um you can always find me um and lots of resources on um, our free space page the new member q a uh free space page um you can leave a comment for me there i'll get a notification or you can go right to my profile i'm co31 so um always happy I'm and I'm Greenwood 3667. It's a little more convoluted than hers. 3667. There we go. Yeah. Where does it save the chat to? It, uh, you get to, once you actually click on save to chat, you get yeah. to um, define where on your computer it goes. Um, so it's like a paste. Yeah, yeah, it'll show, it'll be a little text file. Yeah, I think okay. it's a TXT file. And, um, yeah. Um, Doesn't let me paste, though. I've got a notepad open. Yeah. I clicked on well, the... Well, it's going gonna, it's gonna to save as an actual file on your yeah. computer. Uh, go ahead and click oh, show oh. in folder. So if you show oh. in folder, that should open up your... Um, your browser yeah. on your computer for that? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I got it. Thank you. All okay. right. You're welcome. Well, I guess we'll we'll wrap things up for tonight. Um, and if if you want to spend some more time with us, um, it's on Sunday, Sunday morning, my morning, uh, eleven o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Um, D, who's with us tonight, is we're gonna look at these profiles. Uh, I'll have a new, she'll have a new camera by then. And um, Steve won't be with me, but uh, Hillary It'll Gatsby will, will be my co-host and she's in the England and Wales project. So. 
How often do you run these, Betty? Betsy? Um, the first Thursday of every month, and then the Sunday immediately after that first Thursday. Cool. I'll put it in my calendar. Wonderful. Yes. yes. Yeah. Great. Well, thanks so much, everyone. It was really Thank you. talking genealogy with you. Okay. Thanks so much, Bye. guys. Bye-bye.